I'm Trisha at Club Scrap, and I am so excited to share this Celebrate Card Kit workshop with you. We're going to have a lot of fun learning about paper and how to make cards efficiently the Club Scrap way. And uh, let's just get started. I've got a copy of the instructions that are designed to work with this, specifically with this kit. And the kit, of course, the Celebrate Card Kit. And um, I also have an accordion pocket file. And if you take one of my live workshops, I loan one of these to you. But this is also something that you can make yourself with the help of one of my video tutorials. Again, this is called the accordion pocket file. It helps us stay organized as we create three groups of cards, group A, B, and C. And it has this handy little lip on the front, which we then put under the base of our guillotine trimmer, another important component of the workshop supply tools um, that I use pretty much every day. I'm gonna take all of the beautiful goodies and things that came in the kit to embellish and decorate our cards, and I'm just gonna set them aside. Maybe I'll just slide everything onto this cutting mat here. And now I just have the papers. Now in, in any class that I do, the first thing we always do is organize the papers in the order that we will be trimming them. And it's an important step to just help us avoid errors, like trimming two of the same sheet at the same time, or maybe uh, sorting through to make sure we have all of the colors uh, labeled properly. All right, so the first piece of paper we will trim is this beautiful 12 by 12 print. Now you have two of that pretty much everything here, so just make sure you take one of those prints and then I'll have you put it face down on your work surface and that's gonna end up being the first piece that we trim. And then we're looking for the periwinkle right away, a kind of a little puzzle. So if you look at the colors of the paper in the kit, the periwinkle is the closest to this bluish purple. <laughs> so there's a true purple, more of an aqua blue, and then this sort of in-between color we're calling periwinkle. And then we have this blue plain. Let's take one of those, and it's plain blue on each side. It's a beautiful color. And then we're going to call this one grape. So grape will be next. And then a white plain. This has a beautiful textured felt finish, and it's on both sides of that paper, so it doesn't matter really which side you use. And then a black plain. And finally, this other black print. And then we have two other prints that we're gonna trim uh, last. Let's put those in the proper order. The first one we'll trim is the one with this sort of grayed out area here in the corner. Uh, too bad I can't remember what it is. Happy birthday, that's on the other side. We'll put that face down. And then you should have one more sheet of what we call cut aparts. Put that face down. That's the stack. Flip it back over to the top. And here we are, right where we started. And we're gonna get ready with our trimming. If you want to follow along, um, I'm working at page two of the instructions, starting out with this 12 by 12 print. Um, but honestly, I think the easiest thing, especially if you're brand new to this, would be to just start by listening and watching rather than trying to look at this diagram and figure out what I'm doing. Initially, it can be a little bit confusing. So we're gonna dispel the mystery of efficient card making and just um, walk you through it step by step. So this first piece will be placed into the trimmer. And in, in this case, it does not really matter uh, what direction it goes in. If you're using this guillotine style for the first time, what I'd like you to do is find the eight inch mark. Make sure you're, you're not looking at centimeters, but at inches. Make sure the paper is flush with the very top edge of the trimming base to ensure a straight cut. Take your left hand and stabilize on the clear bar before you make the slice. Then always, always, always leave the paper pile up uh, next to the blade of the trimmer. So let's just slide the paper down to four inches, stabilize, and cut. Now we can take two of the four by 12 strips that we just made. We're gonna rotate them so they're horizontal and cut at six inches. So just make sure, especially in this case, that you stabilize on that clear bar. And then let's just gather up the four pieces that you just created that are all the same size and put those in pocket C. All right, then we have another four by 12 that gets cut differently. So we'll cut horizontally at 10 and a quarter. So I find 10, go to the left, one vertical column at 10 and a quarter, seven and three quarters, and five and a quarter. So those measurements are a little different. All, let's see, this larger piece, and then there are two medium-sized rectangles those three pieces are placed in pocket A. 
and there's one other smaller rectangle. I put this in pocket D for decorating options. It's not officially allocated for a card, but you can certainly incorporate it into a card if you like. Now we're going to take this periwinkle plane. And I want you to place it into the trimmer with the grain direction running properly from top to bottom. That will help us later when we fold this into a card base. So hold, to determine the grain, hold the paper by a center edge and study its behavior. Is the paper stiff or is it pliable? Then rotate to another neighboring edge, hold it by the center, and study the behavior of the paper. In this case, the paper is very pliable. Here it's very stiff very droopy and cooperative so that's the way I want it placed into the trimmer going top to bottom with that easily dipping motion top to bottom okay so we're gonna start out and cut at 11 inches then we're gonna take this whole piece and rotate it one turn and we're gonna cut at 10 and a quarter and eight and a half Then we're going to rotate this piece horizontally and cut it five and a half. Take these two pieces that you just made that are the same size and put them in pocket A. And then you have these other longer strips. These will be filed in pocket A as well. And then you have this long strip. It's just one by 11 right now. We'll cut it horizontally at 10 and five. Now if you'll notice this piece is so narrow that I can almost not really see uh, where the 10 is exactly. If you want you can bring this down to the so that the top of the paper lines up with the line below the inch mark. That's at 10 and then at 5. Both of these strips can be placed in pocket B. This my friends is a scrap. So I'm going to put that in D for de possible decorating p potential. Okay, we're going to trim the next two pieces at the same time. All right, so let's take this paper and try to judge the grain direction. Here it's very floppy, so I want it flopping top to bottom. And I'm going to do the same thing with the grape color. This is stiff. Oh, this is nice and floppy. It wants to be more floppy this way, so top to bottom. And... That won't always be the case. I will always indicate if the grain direction matters in the instructions. If you look at this, here's the blue plane and grape plane, and there's an arrow indicating that the paper should dip easily top to bottom when it's placed into the trimmer. If that arrow is pointing left to right, that would mean you would rotate it this way. And I will be very clear about that um, in my diagrams and video tutorials as well. We're going to cut this at 7 inches. I'm doing both sheets of paper at the same time. And again, making sure you stabilize in the clear bar. Then rotate and cut at 10. These two pieces that are the same size and they're large will be the base for card set C. So you can put that in that pocket. And the same is true for these little 2 by 7s put those in pocket C. Now we have two more pieces that are currently 5 by 12 We'll cut them horizontally at 10 and 3 quarters and 7. These larger pieces we created will be placed in pocket B. And then we have some smaller panels in pocket A, and then we have a lot smaller, we'll go in pocket B. Okay, so you can see the efficiency here. We're doing everything, all the trimming needed for 12 cards all at once. Let's check our grain direction. We want to dip easily top to bottom with the white and the black. So this is dippy and dippy. <laughs> Top to bottom as it has been this whole entire time. Okay, our first cut is at 11 and a quarter. And then seven. And again, we're trimming both the white and the black at the same time. Then rotate this seven by 12. We're going to cut it at 10 and file both of these large pieces in pocket C. All right, these two are rectangles that are currently two by seven. We'll cut them horizontally at three and a half. So basically in half. All four of these rectangles are placed in pocket B. We have a long wider strip here. We'll cut this horizontally at 11. And file this in pocket A. That should leave you with this smaller strip. If you'd like, you can put it in pocket D. Then you have this really long, skinny piece. 
we're going to, as carefully as we can, place this horizontally into the trimmer and line it up kind of as I explained before, just below the inch mark, and slice that at seven. This larger seven inch piece, pocket C, and the smaller, skinnier guy, pocket B. Moving right along, we have one more piece to trim. This time the grain direction does need to go left to right. So I'm going to just check for a dip. It's very flexible this way, very stiff this way. So it's going to go into the trimmer, dipping easily left to right. And why do we do that? Because we're going to fold this paper into a card base. And if you've ever folded a piece of paper in half and had it be a really crinkly, unattractive fold, it's because you were folding it against the grain. All right, let's trim this at 11 and 7. Rotate. And we'll cut at 10 and 5. You just created two pieces that are the same. I'll put those in pocket B. And then you have this long skinny guy that goes in pocket C. It's two by seven. Now we have our uh, four by 12 here. We'll cut that horizontally at 10 and a half and five and a quarter. Place both of these panels in pocket A. And then there's a scrap for D for decorating and a long strip. We'll cut that horizontally at 10 and 5. 10 and 5. All right, both of these, pocket B, and another <laughs> tolerable scrap. Very few scraps, actually, when you consider how much paper we started with, and our yield will be 12 cards. Now let's move on to what we call the cut aparts. This is uh, where the stamper and scrap worker can work together in perfect harmony. Um, if you are a stamper and you don't want to use these prepared images, just trim as directed and then stamp the plain side and you can assemble cards with your very own artwork. That's the beauty of this. Now, to trim, I don't provide the specific dimensions, but I did give you a little uh, registration mark. It's a very pale gray and you'll see it on the edge of each cut apart and we'll trim this into strips and then into individual panels. And as a rule of thumb I always put this piece of paper into the trimmer so the narrowest piece is on the right thus keeping the bulk of my paper supported by the base of my trimmer and we will first cut at ten and a half inches. I'm going to give you these measurements now just to be verified. <laughs> Then we'll slide down to, this will be nine. And again, it's not in your written instructions, but some people really do like to know and verify that they're cutting at the right measurement. And the next is gonna be six and a half. Finally, four-ish. So I always err on the side of aligning that registration mark with the outer edge of your steel blade on your trimmer base. Then we'll rotate, keeping the skinniest piece on the right and cut at 11 and a quarter and six. This larger piece will end up on the inside of a black card so that we have a nice liner for uh, writing our greeting and sentiment. It's gonna go in pocket C. This larger panel goes in, other larger panel goes in A and there's a very, very teeny strip here. You can, we decorated it, but it's really a bonus. So I'll put it in D for decoration and then grab the next strip. Um, I think these are all going to be the same size. Yes, yeah, so we'll cut this piece horizontally at nine, six, and three. All of these pieces go in pocket B. Next, um, we'll put it in so it says, but it's handmade on the right. We'll cut it nine six and three all of this goes in pocket c then we have these the skinnier strips so we'll trim that horizontally here at seven and three quarters and five and a quarter these three pieces pocket a we're going to repeat that this piece here so seven and three quarters and five and a quarter. Pocket A, almost there. One more piece to trim and we can get to card making. Okay, here, a registration mark. Life is better, should be on the right. And we'll cut at 10 and a quarter. And seven. Three and a half. Rotate. 
we're going to cut at 11 and five and a half. These two larger panels, pocket C. Repeat, there'll be 11, five and a half. Larger pieces, pocket C. And we do have some bonus material here for decoration if you desire. Then we have this piece. We're going to place it in so it says enjoy this day on the far right. And cut at 10 and 3 quarters. Nine and four and a half. These two larger pieces are placed in pocket A. We've got free cake. B. Enjoy this day is a bonus. You can replace that. Like, let's say you didn't want to have a happy birthday. You just wanted to have a general card or something. Just swap it out. Celebrates on the right here. We'll trim at nine and three quarters. Six and a half. And three and a quarter. All right. These three similarly sized panels all go in pocket B. And... This is a bonus. Again, can be swapped out. Just the word celebrate if you like. That marks the end of all of the trimming required for a dozen cards. There's been very, very little waste, which I love. I'll set my trimmer aside and always make sure that you support your accordion pocket file when you remove your trimmer so that it doesn't fall over and tip everything onto the floor. Not that I've ever seen that happen anywhere. We're going to start out with card set A and I'll just take the contents of the entire envelope or entire pocket A and um, kind of sort these out a little bit. We can begin by preparing our panels and normally like in a at home setting I might have a score pal I'll show you what that looks like if you don't already know or have one and we would be doing some scoring so um, but I've designed these classes so that we don't need a score pal in class the cards would simply be able to be folded in half or in half again I'll show you what I mean so let's start up by placing one of these um, periwinkle papers into the score pal. We can score it four and a quarter or it can simply be folded in half. The score line just simply ensures a more neat and tidy fold. Because we have um, prepared these card panels to be folded with the grain, um, the scoring will be quite a bit easier. <clears throat> okay, now for this card, I'm going to do something a little extra. I'm going to score it five and a half. And then I'm also going to just flip this card over from bottom to top or top to bottom and score it two and three quarters. I'm going to repeat that for the other white piece. So here we go. Scoring at five and a half. Flip it bottom to top or top to bottom, either way. And then score it two and three quarters. So it's like a double score line, and I'll show you more about that in a moment. If you would like, you may also do the same thing with this panel. We'll score it five and a half. Flip, score it two and three quarters. That does not have to be scored again. It's just folded and then folded in half again. But I'm just going to set you up for scoring success two and three quarters here. Okay, so with that scoring done, let's just kind of prep some piles to make a set of four cards. And if you're following along in the instructions, we're looking right away at page three. And we can see the samples of the first two cards we'll be making. And as a previous note, when I was helping you trim the cut-aparts, I was looking at page one of the instructions where every single piece that's been trimmed has an, a letter on it, and that's how I know where those pieces were filed. The same is also true for the documents where we just trim the papers. Each piece that you create will have a letter that corresponds with the card set it belongs to. A lot of time has been invested into figuring out the most efficient way to make our cards. Okay, so here I have the white scored card base, and I have a bump for a score, and I also have a, an indentation. So let's fold along the middle so that the bump of the score, or the raised area, gets buried inside the fold. That is the correct way to fold a scored piece, burying the bump. It's a nice alliteration to help you remember. Here is another bump. That's why we did that flip. So now when I fold this free edge up to the mountain we created when we made our first fold, we bury the bump again. That's going to give us the best looking, most functional card base. We'll repeat with the black. Here's the bump. So we're going to bury it as we fold the card exactly in half. Here's the other bump. We're going to fold right to the mountain. And if you don't have a scoreboard, you can just still do the same thing. Here's the bump on this purple or periwinkle piece. 
and then we can fold back to bury this bump. And we call this like a like a Z fold card. Would maybe be a good name for this card structure. Here's the bump. We'll bury it. And then fold this end up here. So what I like to do is kind of sort things into piles. We have two other cards we can fold. So we're making two standard folded cards and two Z fold cards. So we'll kind of get these, everything from set A prepped and ready to go. Okay, so let's distribute. I call this step the deal, okay? So uh, we're gonna deal the things that we need to finish up these cards into each individual pile based on the image that I see here in my instructions. So take a black card base paired with Periwinkle and then we're gonna place that here. And um, also one of these smaller printed panels will fit here. And then on the next card, we need to have one of these larger printed panels that will fit on the inside. And then a smaller printed panel for the flap. I'm going to add a printed panel to each one of these Periwinkle card bases, which end up being horizontal. And then one of them gets this grape color and one gets the blue to nest. Now we have all the printed items and I usually sort these out last. So um, there is a saying goes on both of these and the inside should say, too bad I can't remember what it is. And too bad I can't remember what it is. So this is the inner uh, for each card. Now how do I know what goes inside of that card? Well, on the instructions below each card, there's a little notation and kind of fine print that tells you what was inside that card. And then on the others, we have the, the long strips that say every day is a reason to celebrate and today that's you. Okay, we have some piles here. It's very exciting, I know. But let me show you how these cards will then come together. We'll start out with this black one, um, the black card base. And the assembly for this is incredibly easy. And of course you have the option to embellish at will. Okay, so let the efficient card making begin. We'll take this white panel, printed panel, and here, adhere that to the inside of this card base, making sure that the flap is going to your left here. Okay, and then we can also go ahead and add this panel right to the front flap when the card is in a closed position. Good. Next, this strip will be positioned in such a way that the widest part is in the front and then the two skinnier areas are on the right. So each of these panels will be decorated with sentiment. So I'll have to put adhesive on this. Oh, before I do that, I'm gonna take some of this ribbon and trim it and fold it in half with some tape. This is a nice uh, low profile way to attach ribbon to a card base, just so that you I'm going to tape this right to the front of my card before I add my sentiment to this long portion of the strip. Make sure this is coming out to the right and we'll add the inner sentiment today that's you. Okay, so then close each piece, the card base and the flap. And that's how it's going to be adhered. But you have to be careful not to put adhesive where it doesn't belong or you won't be able to open this. You'll have made a, a postcard, essentially. The secret to the easiest way to assemble this is by keeping this closed, you can apply adhesive to the exposed areas. Do not put any adhesive in this, this opening here, okay? Just to the exposed areas when this is flat. Then simply close the card. And I like to position it kind of toward the bottom. I think it kind of gives it nice structure. And now it functions exactly as it should. Isn't that wonderful? At this point, you can go ahead and take some sequins or, you know, I used a glue dot to attach these. Kind of a nice way to do it. But it's, and it's entirely up to you how you want to finish embellishing the card. Another option is to add the word wish. We have this sweet little wish charm. And um, I, my favorite way of adhering charms is with our book binding glue in a needle tip applicator. So I just added a dab to the back of the wish charm and added it to the corner of 
this card. Set it aside in a matter of minutes, the glue will be completely dry and that charm isn't gonna go anywhere. All right, there you have it. That's uh, the first sample of card set A. You'll repeat the whole process exactly with all of the elements that we've already prepared for card, for card set A for this second white card. And then I'm turning to page four of my instructions and I can view the assembly of uh, this next style, which is quite simple. One of the things I can show you here as an added bonus for watching the workshop on video is how I make a quick and easy bow uh, with this beautiful um, metallic purple grow grain ribbon. So what I do is make two bunny ears, cross them. One of the ears will be on top, so that's the one that goes around to the back and you pull it through the loop that you've made and pull it tight and then adjust the ends until the bow is the size you want it to be. It's a relatively low profile bow, which I like uh, for cards that I want to pop in the mail. If you're going to do something real high profile or something that you want to have a lot of dimension, then it should probably be hand delivered. So at this point, I'll just kind of take a guesstimate as to how long the ribbon needs to be. Grab two pieces of tape. And then I'm just going to go... Oh, I'll set the tape aside for one moment while I nest this onto the panel. I'm going to do it at an angle just to add a little interest. Just make sure the corners don't touch the edge of the panel forming an unattractive tangent. And then we'll wrap this around to the back and secure with tape. Next, I will nest this. And because of the, the math involved in planning this class out, this will nest, if everything went according to plan, perfectly onto the printed panel and then perfectly onto the card base. Plus we have the fun sentiment to add to the inside of the card. Finally, if you like, you can add the word wish to the top corner for that. I'll reach for my trusty bookbinding glue that's just awesome for all kinds of card making. And I'll add that to the card as well. And you can finish this next card in the same exact way. So that wraps up what we need for set A and let's move on to the next card. I've taken everything out of pocket B and organized it into some piles of similar sized items. It just kind of is a little bit easier to keep track of what's going on. And I find that my most organized students are the ones that fare the best in my classes. If you, if you have stuff all over the place, just pause me and just sort of organize yourself so you have a little bit of room to work. I'm going to take the largest pieces and normally in class without a score pal, we would simply fold them in half horizontally, but I'm going to score them at three and a half inches just so that we get a nice crisp fold. And here's a tip. If you're scoring a whole bunch of things, you can actually score two at a time as long as you press firmly. So don't do this unless you're pretty experienced at using this tool, but you can definitely do two cards at a time. Okay, so then we'll take our card bases that we've prepared, and these are a nice, sweet little thank you or small, small size card base. We're burying the bump. So remember the... Bump of the score is on the inside here, which is exactly what we want. This beautiful print on the outside of our card base. And now we've got four bases ready to ready to go. So I, the beautiful uh, washi tape, sparkly, is involved in these cards, but I'm just going to set that aside for now and not worry about that quite yet. We've got an assortment of strips here. The purple and purple are used in combination with a narrower black and white strip. And then combined with a white panel on this one and a black panel here. And then this will say free cake, free cake. And the inside <laughs> says, I mean, happy birthday. <laughs> We're all excited about the free cake. Okay, then we'll swap the colors for the strip here and then embellish them with the printed strips that we've rescued from the scrap pile, essentially. We'll do a black frame and 
white frame there followed by life is better when you're among friends on each and then thinking of you goes inside um, we have these wonderful grid rulers at Club Scrap in various sizes. I keep them really handy. We've got an 8x8 eight eight that I often use in my scrapbooking for helping determine my photo sizes. Um, and we also have a 3x14. If you're just going to have to have one, this is the size to have. And for card makers, we have a 2x8. I really love these grid rulers, um, especially when I'm adhering things onto a card base that need to be level or centered or straight because uh, I have a terrible tendency of making things crooked. And let's just say, for example, I want to center this perfectly onto the card. By habit, if I put some adhesive and I center it on there and I walk away, I come back and I notice immediately it's running downhill or it's not centered. So each of these rulers comes with a zero center on one side and then it's just like zero to eight on this side. So if I get a Put this in my zero center and make sure the measurements on each side are equal this comes in at two and a half inches from this edge and two and a half inches from this one okay so now my ruler is centered and i just have to figure out what's the distance from the left edge to the right edge so that it's the same when i add this like one and three quarters and then i'm also going to make sure in this case that i'm three quarters of an inch up from the bottom of my card. So every solid line on this ruler represents a quarter of an inch. So that's one quarter, a half, three quarters. But once you grasp the style of measuring, leveling, and centering, you can really make a, a, a big difference in how your cards look. So I'm going to take some adhesive and put it on my panel. Make sure my ruler is all level with all the lines. Center this on here at one and three quarters of an inch and then drop it down. So I'm resting along the edge and then dropping. And now it is level. It is exactly centered with equal margin on all four sides. You're welcome. <laughs> okay, now I will take this black strip and marry that up with the purple. Then I'll take my washi tape and center that on top of the black strip. So it's like a triple matted strip. And I believe the washi tape will rip easily and then just wrap the ends around to the back. Very nice finished look. I'll put adhesive on the back of this strip. I'm gonna grab my rusty, trusty grid ruler. And I always say I keep them all handy because if I can't find one, I just reach for the other. And then I can, again, just level this up with one of the lines on the ruler to make sure that I'm not gluing this onto the card downhill. I'll rest the piece onto the ruler's edge and then drop it down, and that looks very nice. And I can finish with free cake. Yay! And take one of these lovely little crowns, and the curvature of the crown is the perfect angle to complement the little semicircle we have going on here. And I'm going to put some of our bookbinding glue in the back of this. And let's just put this, if you have a second, just push down. Otherwise, place it under a heavy object for a minute or two, and that crown will be nice and secure in that spot. Finally, you'll put some adhesive on the back of the inner sentiment and add it to the card. All four of the cards in this set are assembled in the exact same manner, and I'll give you a tour of all the finished cards when we're done with the video. Let's move on to card set C. All right, I've taken my own advice and organized myself into some piles of like-sized items uh, from the remaining pocket C, and I went ahead and scored and folded my 7x10 card bases horizontally at five, 5 inches, folded them to make my single-fold card. So we'll have two horizontal cards, that'll be the, the blue and the purple, and then uh, two vertical, the black and the white. Now, what we can do is set up our anchoring strips so, so let's distribute the purple here and i think i'm going to use this plain side up you wouldn't have to but it creates more contrast for the card i'm going to take this aqua color and place it here and then just the white here and added black strip here. Now we end up incorporating a lot of the um, sparkly washi tape into these cards, which I absolutely think adds so much. It's just wonderful. And then each one of these cards will receive a printed panel. And again, that's why I use this um, 
plain side up. That's always a nice option. Then we have our horizontal sentiments for these two cards, our vertical sentiment for these. Now remember earlier I said we needed something, a liner, because this is a black card base. We've designed this extra added liner for the inside, right? Because we're thinking ahead at Club Scrap all the time. For the inside we have, but it's handmade, and then a great friend forgets which one it is. I love love these cards. Okay, I'm going to set aside all but the one, and I'll just walk you through the simple finishing touches for this piece. First of all, with our anchoring strip, we'll take a little bit of this fun washi tape. Okay, so I've added some adhesive, and I'm going to come in with my ruler. Make sure the straight edge of the ruler is rest, resting. The edge of the card is resting in one of the straight lines of the ruler, and we'll place this little strip across the bottom. That gives me a nice anchoring spot. Then we have our sentiment and we still have some luscious lengths of ribbon at our disposal. So because we have so much, I can just simply tie this beautiful taffeta. And whenever I as a source ribbon for our collections, I always try to make sure that our satin is double faced. So when you tie a bow, it does not really matter which side is facing which. And we'll cut this at an angle. Same with the other side. I dedicate a scissors just to cutting ribbons so that it stays nice and sharp. And then we'll nest this onto our printed panel. That, of course, will fit perfectly. Nice and centered. Okay, that's lovely. And then, finally, take this last panel. We'll angle this. Again, watching for tangents. So a tangent is where a corner touches an edge. So if I turn the card like this, this panel, I have a tangent happening here where this corner reaches, touches that other corner here, here, and even here, it's making a tangent with the washi tape. So when I eyeball my placement, I'm just gonna make sure all of the corners of my panel have their own space. They're not nudging up against anything and that's gonna give it the most pleasing aesthetically pleasing look. I mean, if you're a big fan of having the corner touch, it's like, again, your own darn card. I just sometimes like to share those little design tips. And then we have the inner sentiment in place. And now that's the basic structure for all of card set C. And at this point, you can go ahead and intersperse the perfectly matching assortment of little sequins. And again, a, a glue dot or some Adhesive, if you put some weight on this, or any other dry adhesive that you prefer to use, uh, works really well for those embellishments. Let's take a really quick tour of all the finished cards. Here we have the one, I think we started this one together. So again, a very nice Z-fold style. And here we have our sequins added with glue dots. It's just a very nice, cheerful, happy, yet nice one-dimensional card for mailing purposes. Same with uh, this other... A2 size or four and, a, four and a quarter by five and a half sized card. Very fun on the inside and outside with our handmade bow with the bunny ears. And then for card set B, we had our horizontal cards and we made one together. Very, very sweet, especially with the addition of that tape. And then our two vertical cards. This time I put the crown right at the top of the sentiment. And because this was already so pretty, I didn't want to cover that up, I put the washi tape to the right of the nested strip. All of this, of course, attached with my favorite tool, the Club Scrap Grid Ruler. Then we have our two horizontal cards that we made, um, each with a trio of sequins added with a glue dot. And then in the case of the vertical cards, you can see the different ways I've attached this uh, border. It can layer in any order, like I started with the wider strip, then the mat, and then the nested border so that more of this sparkle tape would be exposed. And then here we have our sequins and then the purple grow green ribbon tied in exactly the same manner that I showed you when we did it with the blue taffeta. On the um, black card, of course, I have the the liner in along with the final greeting for this this card. Now what's really fun and pretty innovative about these instructions is that you can once again take paper that you might have from your stash and substitute. So let's say you have a piece of 12 by 12 printed paper in your stash at home. I mean, I don't know what the likelihood of that would be, 
maybe it's highly likely. And then you would find a substitute for the periwinkle and a substitute for the blue and the grape and so on. And then you can go ahead and trim to all of those specified instructions that I've got here in this document, organize them into piles and go ahead and make another set of cards that are just like these. And then as far as the um, decor on each card will go, you can use um, elements from maybe something that you already own to help add your sentiments, like maybe some rubber stamps. And you can make an additional dozen or more cards using this formula over and over again. Well, I hope this has given you a really great understanding of how our efficient card making works. Of course, we would love to have you as a monthly uh, subscriber to our card kits or also our page kits. We make, make them every month and each month each kit includes a full video tutorial similar to this one that shows you exactly how to assemble the cards. And I always try to have a really special card structure for you to learn each month so you're constantly expanding your card making skills. Also, I'd like to invite you to join our active Facebook chat group where we talk about all the things that we make with goods from Club Scrap. We've been doing this for 20 years, can't wait to do it for many more, and we hope to see you there as a member or as a guest on our Facebook chat. Happy card making!